I am keeping my rotation as it stands. So week one, cells. Week two, heaven earth design. Week three, focus eight. Week four, rotation. This month, my rotation week four is a little bit different because I'm only focusing on two projects rather than the 10 that would, generally speaking, occupy those last 10 days of the month. So I'm essentially working on six projects this month. That's it. Um, I'm actually working on seven, and I'll talk about that here in a second. So let's go ahead and, and go through my plans. So week one, fantasy, Sal, as well as my Clouds Factory postcards from the world. If you're on Facebook and you're in some of the Facebook groups that I'm in, your news feed got blown up by me. I feel like social media can be so redundant because I want to share this with everybody, <laughs> but it was a lot. So sorry about that, um, but I just kind of wanted to share it. I was so excited. Why was I so excited? Because I finished it. So postcards from the world, preview here of what it looked like the last time you saw it. My fabric is a 28 count cashel linen in Monet from Picture This Plus. And I did it. So I'm going to scroll up here. So Venice, Paris, London, Moscow, New Delhi, Giza, Rio de Janeiro, Sydney, Tokyo, New York, Vancouver, and the North Pole. With our last block, of course, being the North Pole. All done. <laughs> Here's why this project is extra super exciting for me for finishing it. This is my 18th finished object for 2016, and it is, by leaps and bounds, my largest finish. This is, the, like, the only big finish that I've had this year. Um, despite the fact that I have so many big projects, this is the only big one that I've finished. So I'm going to take it in on the North Pole block so that you can see that in case you didn't see it a thousand times yesterday. Um, I thought this block was super cute. I did make a couple of changes. Um, I All of the backstitch lines except for the dark brown are done in two strands. I gave the Explorer some gloves because she was not charted with gloves and I felt that that was important being that she's in the North Pole in December. It's the Northern Hemisphere and it's approximately, I, th I think I, I checked the forecast on the North Pole yesterday. It was minus 33 Fahrenheit. So yeah, she needs some gloves. Um, <laughs> the Harbor Seal, I don't know how I feel about his face. I mean, I get it. There are limited stitches there to accomplish that face, but um, not not my favorite. The orca, though, super cute. I love him. And let's see what else. Oh, my signature is right there. A little bubble. Kind of looks like the bubbles that adorn the outside border of the whole thing in between each of the of the blocks there. So you see there's these ones there. And so it kind of fits in there. It's a little bit smaller than the bubble, but that's okay. So happy! Finished! As you guys know, sometimes stitching takes longer than you think it will. I thought for sure that this was going to take me five Maybe six hours to stitch. Eleven hours later, I finally finished it. Now, there were a couple of little breaks in there, but um, I did it. So, that's my finished Clouds Factory. I'm so excited. I absolutely love this project. I was having a conversation with Sarah from Sarah Machine. 
Sarah Marie Shears. Sorry about that, Sarah. And uh, talking about my favorite blocks. I really love the Paris block. So cute. I love New Delhi. I love Moscow. I love Tokyo. Oh, that Tokyo block. So pretty. And the North Pole block. Loved it. Um, so, changes that I made throughout this project. Um, let's see here. I don't know that I ever had the right dark blue like you see in the Arc of the Three Elf. I don't know that I have the right blue there in the whole piece. Um, you might remember I had this huge drama of I kept getting the wrong 790. It was supposed to be 797. I kept getting 796 or something like to that effect. Uh, let's see. As was pointed out, I added the tail for the camel in Giza because I thought he looked silly without one. I changed all of the colors in the Christ the Redeemer statue. I did not change anything about Sydney or Tokyo or Vancouver, I don't think. I added some postmark squiggles where necessary when they weren't charted that way. Um, and, as it turns out, I ended up changing the shade of white he used for the North Pole. It totally wasn't on purpose. Um, I was totally out of Blanc or DMC white. Totally out. So I'm going through my projects. And my afternoon in Paris, or no, afternoon in New York. I don't have afternoon in Paris. I don't know why I said that. Afternoon in New York calls for DMC White. So I pulled that. What I didn't remember was that I had actually subbed out that white for B5200. So the North Pole block is a little bit brighter white than the rest of the piece because it's in B5200. <laughs> oh well. If you can tell, some, as somebody said on Facebook, you're too damn close. <laughs> I love this. I love this so much. It gives me such wanderlust. Uh, but it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. I was nervous about my fabric this whole year because the called for fabric is that rosewood that my graceful reindeer is on. So it's that pinky brown color. And I went purple. Um, so it really changes the aesthetic of the whole design, but I think that it worked out really nice. Some of these blocks, even perfect. Moscow, love that. I think it's perfect for the Moscow block. Uh, the Giza block, I don't know. Purple. Hmm. Um, and then these last three kind of wintertime blocks, I think the purple looks really nice for those. So, really stoked with how the purple turned out. I'm so excited to have a big finish this year. I wasn't sure if it was going to happen. So there's that. So this is my Year of Whips finish number six. It is the first project that I had picked for the Stitch Mania uh, month-long sale for December, the final countdown, where the goal is to finish stuff. Um, so I did that. Um, I beat Katie in our race. It's a quote-unquote race. It's not really a race. Uh, but I had decided it was. <laughs> it was a race that she didn't even know she was participating in. Let's just put it that way. Um, love it. No idea what I'm doing with it. Um, I would love to frame it. I might put it in my office because they say that, um, they say that readers travel, uh, Readers live a thousand lives, or readers travel through through reading, um, so that might be that might be appropriate spice for this. I just I think it's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I can't stop showing it. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay, so that is that is that. Okay, so my next sal is my fantasy sal. I actually started working on this on November the 30th because the new block came out. 
that evening for me. Um, so I was working on this project on November the 30th and then I put it away before yesterday so that uh, I could focus and get that black done for postcards. So here is a preview of what the Fantasy Sal by Lakeside Needlecraft and Doreen Jones look like before today. Um, this is on a 32 count Belfast Linen in Heroic from Picture This Plus. And I've done kind of a little bit here and there. So I did a little bit of the frame for the December block. I did a little bit of the border here on the bottom. And then when the block came out, I did a little bit of the block. So this month's block is a fairy. Um, and I'm going to maybe, yeah, I have it here for what she will look like finished. I've decided it's a she. And the present that she's holding is wine. Yes, it's box wine. And her name is Mari, spelled M-A-R-I, not Mary. Thank you very much. Her parents did not name her Mary the Fairy. <laughs> her name is Mari. And I think she's so cute. I've been trying to imagine how that how that coat was fashioned, how it was created to have space for her wings. Like, did she have to bend her wings to get through that? I don't know. Uh, that, that backstory has yet to be developed. <sighs> but anyway, so that's where I'm at currently. My needle minder's here. Um, I have a Phoenix uh, from Nifty Needle Nannies as well as Toothless from, you guessed it, Nifty Needle Nannies. Uh, so that... That's where I'm at currently, and so I'm going to work on this today, and probably tomorrow. I don't think I'm going to get the block finished today, because I marathoned that postcard yesterday. I'm a little tired. <laughs> Need a little bit of breather space. I counted up the stitches for the, um, the Ultimate Cross Stitch Group Stitch the Gingerbread Man Challenge. So I did 1,463 stitches yesterday in one day. And it's kind of a lot, at least, you know, for me. Anyway, um, so needed a little bit of a break. So taking a breather, going to take it easy on this block. It's only December 2nd. <laughs> like, I still have another five days left of this part of my rotation. So, ta-da, there is my fantasy self. And I am stitching her skin one over one. Um, you might be able to see that. I started the skin a little bit. So there we go. Okay. All right, so that's the fantasy style. Now let's talk about week two. Week two, these are based on the voting. Um, the rest of some of these projects are based on the voting that was done that I asked you guys to do, and thank you once again so much for doing that. Um, so my project for week two is my Heaven and Earth design, and it is Mini Pirate by Sabine Rich. This one won out only just. Uh, I didn't, wasn't a landslide or anything, and I don't think I have the cover sheet for this one. No, I do not. So I'm going to insert a picture of what this will look like finished. Uh, this is on 25 Count Antique White Lugana by Zweigart, as I've said, with all of my Heaven Earth designs. And here is my starting point. So this is where the one question from my Q&A comes into play. I have a question from Pamela Spearing, and she wanted to know what all of these threads are. Are they waist knots? They are not. They are not knots. Um... So I use kind of a similar method to the waist knot method, except I don't tie a knot. Um, they're just waist threads that I set over there, and then I actually use the stitches to trap it without having to flip to the back. Um, 
this is something that I'm working on trying to get a demo done for. Mm -hmm. I recorded something, but it didn't it didn't quite show what I wanted it to show. So I'm still working on some details for that. Um, so it's kind of the waste not method without actually being knots. Uh, I just find it easier and it's it works out just fine for me. So I have almost a half page. I think what I'm going to do is finish out that column and then work on the rows like I've been doing. Love this one. The artist, I think, I don't know if I mentioned, it's Sabine Rich. And so yeah, so I'll work on that. I started this project in August of last year. So that's kind of embarrassing. I don't even have a page finished yet. It's not embarrassing. It's just, it's not really where I want it to be at this point. So hoping for a page finish on this. Which I think I can do because... I'm going to give it some extra time so that, um, sorry, I've got to extend that knee. Oh, that hurts. Um, I'm going to give it some extra time. Once I finish the fantasy block, then I'm going to pull that out and work on it. I'm going to try to work some gangbusters on it and get the page done. So that's that. Okay, next week three is my focus eight week. Originally, I was supposed to work on my Elephants by Jane Netley Mayhew. However, because it's Christmas, I thought that it would be appropriate to work on something a little bit more Christmassy. So my focus eight Christmassy piece is the Ho 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 series from Stony Creek. And this was the freebie chart series from... September through November of last year. And so that's what all three of them will look like finished, roughly. I'm not using the Anne cloth, I'm using a 28 count antique white Kesha linen, and it is opalescent, so it's sparkly. And this is a project that I'm trying to finish this month. I think I can do it. I mean, don't quote me on that, but I think I can do it. It's upside down. Because it stitches up really quickly once I put some focused effort into it. So, as you know, I got the Santa done last year. And I've worked on the reindeer some this year. And then the snowman will go there underneath. So, pretty, pretty, sparkly, opalescent -y, lovely fabric. So that's going to get some love. Once I get the page finish on Mini Pirate, then I'm going to switch over to this. So regardless of when that happens. Um, it's only a half page, so I think that I can do it in a couple of days. Depending on what kind of focus I can put into it. Um, so I might be able to work on this for an extended period of time. So there's that. Okay. The next piece that won out um, in the voting was from my ladies category. And I'm really glad that this one won because it's another piece that I can use for the final countdown in Stitch Mania because I think I can finish this in a few days. It stitches up so fast um, because it's a really small design. On 28 count it's only 4.2 inches by seven and a half inches. So it's really, I mean, it's small and it's quick. So this is Nine Ladies Dancing by Nora Corbett. I'm stitching it on the called for fabric, which is a 28 count China pearl linen from Witchell. And here's the progress that I've got so far. I'm really looking forward to working on this because I'm going to stitch all of that krennic. You see that skirt? Filled in with krennic. So, I mean, like, honestly, I don't have a ton left to do. I have to do this curtain, which is so quick, it's not even funny. The skirt, I have to fill in with krennic. I have to stitch her legs and the little banner underneath. And then it's beading time. And I think I can bead this in a day. I think. I mean, you know, I could be 
I could be having one of those. This would go a lot faster uh, than I think it will. But I think it'll go pretty quick. So there's my nine ladies dancing. And this will be perfect because it is Christmas time. And it is a part of the 12 Days of Christmas song. So looking forward to working on that. That is the first half of the week four of my rotation, which is, it turns out to be 10 days. So it's going to be the first five days. I think I can get it done in five days. The second five days are going to be my Pumpkin Patch Farm Sampler, which was also this one. So like the other two categories from my voting were like kind of neck and neck for a long time. This one won hands down like not even a contender or any of the other four. Um, so this is my Pumpkin Patch Farm Sampler by the Victoria Sampler. And I don't have any expectations of finishing this or even the band. Um, the band that I'm going to be working on is this one in here, so it's a pretty big band. And this is on a 32 count Harvest Moon or Winter Moon. <laughs> it's that moon fabric. Um, and so here's where I'm at currently. I forget how little this little guy is. So I have the pumpkin patch band, the squirrel slash cat band with the roosters, and next is the hayride and scarecrow band. So there's that. Love this piece. This is one of my Year of Whips projects, um, which is why I'm kind of glad that it won, because it'll be good to make some progress. I found that there's a bunch of people working on this project, so I think that's really cool. Lots of pumpkin patch farms. So that's that. And then the last project that I'm going to be working on in December is something that I'm going to be focusing on... Um, primarily this coming Sunday, because this Sunday I'm going to the DC metro area Stitchers meetup in Fairfax. I'm so excited. Um, so I kind of need something that I can stitch on, but like, it's not a huge, it's not a huge detail thing where I have to like be focused, you know, because that's going to be difficult. I can already see it. So this is also a project that I want to have done before the 15th of December because we are headed to Michigan for Christmas with my um, with my extended family and so I kind of want to have this done as cards for that extended family. Really quick design. Um, this is the Christmas Star by Liz Almond and I'm going to insert a preview here of what it will look like finished. This I am stitching on 28 count cashew linen and this set is on a, um, an antique white. The other set will be on an ice blue color. Um, so these are the first two of a total of four. So I will have two that are like this one and two that are like this one, where this one's primarily red, this one's primarily green. And then I'll have two that's primarily blue and two that's primarily white with blue. I think I've said that before. Um, so yeah, this is the project that I'm going to take with me on Sunday. Just a couple colors are really easy to work on. So yeah, that's that. And this is another piece that I've got uh, slotted for the final countdown. And it's timeshare with May by the Christmas Collection. So those, those are my plans for December. I'm excited about it. I'm excited to get good progress on just a few things. And so far it's already working because I gotta finish. I mean, you know, it's not that major. Like, I started the block and finished it yesterday, so it's not like, it's not like I finished Persephone in a day. Hold on a second, I'm losing my voice again. Okay. 
So those are my plans for December. Now let's switch gears here and talk about some retail therapy or some haul or some stash quisitions. Quisitions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me unbury that envelope because I have, I've been collecting my retail therapy in an envelope so that when I do this video, I was able to have it all sort of ready at my fingertips. I'm gonna start with needle minders. Um, I got two new needle minders from Nifty Needle Nannies and they are uh, this beautiful, elegant purple pumpkin and the um, pumpkin spice latte, pumpkin latte, pumpkin, whatever. It's clay, it's um, gorgeous. It's everybody's favorite. From what I understand, Julie only had a limited quantity of these, so I had to snatch it up as quickly as possible. So there's that. I also got the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery Happily Ever After Needle Minder. Um, I am not doing this stitch along, but I wanted the Needle Minder. It's my first ever Frosted Pumpkin Needle Minder and I was really excited about it, so got that. So there's that. Okay. Next, I'm going to show you some digital patterns that I got. Um, I got a couple from the Heaven and Earth Designs 50% off sale from a couple weeks ago. I didn't buy anything for myself this past Giving Tuesday. Uh, I did gift a pattern, um, but I kind of wanted to participate in the spirit of giving. So, However, these three are the ones that I got from the previous 50% off sale. So I got... Uh, mini curl up with a good book, which you've already seen, but preview here. I also got a Jasmine Beckett Griffith, whose name I cannot recall, but I will have it listed here on the bottom. It's a mini, um, and it's a vampire, and super pretty. So excited to do that one. That's the one that I almost started uh, in lieu of this other, of the curl up. And then I also got the companion piece to Ex Machina, um, and I think it's called Steam Heart. It's by Chris Ortega, and it is um, it's beautiful. I can't get over Chris Ortega's artwork. I absolutely love everything, everything that they come out with uh, for Heaven and Earth Designs chart. I want them all. Um, Chris Ortega might be one of my favorite artists ever because I'm just so talented. And I love that Steamheart piece. Seeing uh, Davina from Mamula work on her Ex Machina makes me want to get, like, she always inspires me to want to work on my Heaven and Earth designs. Her and Sarah from Tipsy Stitcher, uh, both of you, make me want to Heaven and Earth designs stitch my heart out. So, yeah, very, um, very excited about that one. No clue when that's getting started, but nonetheless, it's beautiful. And it's in my stash. So, um, one other digital pattern that I got. Uh, this was my only, literally my only Black Friday, Small Business Saturday, Cyber Monday purchase for myself. That's it. The Santa Claus is Coming to Town by Stitchrovia. the only one I got for myself um, but I absolutely love this piece I know that uh, Sherry Burkett is working on it and I love it so this has got to be a project for me for next year I almost started it earlier this week but I held off Ugh, so pretty I love the fonts and the colors and the little Santa and the reindeer up here. Wait a second. Oh no, it's going the right way. Okay, I thought that the sleigh was facing like he was traveling this way, but the reindeer were going this way. But no, it's it's correct. So cute. So that's gonna happen. Um, and then I got my very sad last ever issue of cross stitch and needlework. I'm very sad because I feel like 
this end has been coming for a while. And it's just sad. You know, it's... it's. I don't like anything about our hobby um, going away. However, I'm really grateful that they put out this issue like it is. Uh, it's full of some of the old favorites of um, projects from Cross Stitch and Needlework. And they've included this one, which is the um, Amish Life. Made Amish Life. And I don't know what it is about this piece. I know that um, Gingerbread Stitcher was working on this. And it's just, it's so pretty. The house is daunting to me. Because it's just a slab of white. <laughs> but I think it's gorgeous. So I'm going to have to do this piece at some point in the not so distant future. There's a couple others that I like from this. Covered bridge. Joe, did you see this? It's from Iowa, so I can't imagine that you saw that one. It's Bridges of Madison County. Yeah, so very sad, but also... I was pleasantly surprised that they, um, for what they did. So you might know, and you probably do, but if you had any money left over in your subscription, um, they sent it in a Hirschner's gift card. So I will be using mine. I haven't used it yet because I'm trying to figure out the best way to use it. Um, but yeah, I thought that was really nice. They didn't necessarily have to do that. And they did. Okay. The next thing, really exciting, because they go together. So, from under the sea fabrics, I got Portrait of Veronica. Veronica, yes, okay. I kept calling it for Portrait of Victoria, but it's not, it's Veronica. Uh, this is the latest Mirabilia design from October. How gorgeous. I love, love, love her colors. So she is called for Water Lily Linen or Star Sapphire. I got this. Ooh, I love this piece of fabric. Oh. Oh. I have a thing for mint. I don't know if you guys noticed. Um. I wear mint all the time these days, and this is mint from Picture This Plus. It's a 32 count Belfast linen, and yeah, that's happening, like, so perfect. I got this fabric from Stash Unload, and when the seller put it up, I was like, oh my god, <laughs> somebody's going to get this if I don't grab it now. Oh my goodness, so I did. Snatched it right up. I love this color. I don't know why, but it just, it sparks me. It's like so fresh and pretty and perfect for all of those greens. Yeah, she's gonna look good on that. She reminds me of Elizabeth. That pose on the chair and the beads at the edge of her skirt. I love her. I love her bodice. The bodice of her dress is just... Oh, okay. Stop losing my mind over that. Um, so yeah, really excited. Not sure what I'm going to start that because I have another Mirabilia that I want to start before that. Um, but that's not going to be until next year. Um, okay, so... That is it for retail therapy. Quite a lot for me. I don't normally have that much, but it has been like a month. So um, so the last topic for conversation is books. While I was on bed rest, not stitching and certainly not knitting, I was reading. So I don't necessarily want to say that I read a ton, but I read quite a bit. So, the first thing that I did 
was I finished up A Tyranny of Petticoats. But um, this is edited by Jessica Spotswood. It is a collection of 15 short stories by those authors there. And it is about uh, bells, bank robbers, and other badass girls. Historical fiction. This was so good. It was so good. There are some of these stories where I want, like, fully fleshed out novels. Um, there are some of them where I was, like, super happy to just have a snippet of the story because it was enough to get the point across. But some of them, particularly by those authors that I didn't, I don't know their style, like uh, Caroline Tongue Richmond or... Um, J. Anderson Coates. Oh, I loved uh, Coates' story. Uh, Robin Talley, who wrote, um, her, I think her story is the one in Chicago. Let me see. Oh, Lindsay Smith's City of Angels. Man, that was so good. Kekla Magoon's Pulse of the Panthers, which was about the, um, the Black Panthers. So good. Yeah. Robin Talley wrote um, about the riots in Chicago, in Grant Park, uh, Chicago, in 68. Um, this was after Martin Luther King died. And it was at the, um, it was election time. And um, I didn't know about these riots, but so so good this book is so diverse it's girls from all different races it's girls with um questioning their sexuality in periods of time where being a lesbian or um being curious was very very hush hush um there's some elements of fantasy, but there's, like, real historical fiction. I closed this book, and it just made me think. It's so good. It's YA stories, so they're young adults. They're anywhere from 15 to, I think, 19 years old was the oldest one. And they are, it's just beautiful stories. Um, one of my favorites, the one that's called City of Angels takes place in Los Angeles, of course, and it's um, during World War II, just before the end of the war. And it's about these girls that are working at home, trying to find a place in this world that used to be so male-dominated, but now they have to fill these positions. Um, and so this the particular main character for this one, um, she is, um, she's building or repairing airplanes, B-52s, um, from, from the war, and, um, it's just oh, so good, kind of breaks my heart a little bit, um, try not to cry because I, I'm just remembering this story. It's so good, you guys. If you um, have any appreciation for historical fiction, especially American historical fiction, check this out. It's it's just so good. These authors are so talented to be able to fully flesh out these people in 20 pages or less. Stunning novel. It's also a series, so Jessica Spotswood is in the process of editing a second to this. I'm so excited. Can't wait to see what the next one is. Um, okay, the next book I read I finished it, but um, I wanted to throw it. Um, I did not like this book. I finished it because I didn't want to get up because I was on bed rest to go to my office to get another book. All of the books on my Kindle, thus on my iPad, which I did have next to me, none of them were grabbing my attention. I should have just done it. I should have just read one of those. 
but I didn't. I have this thing about like DNFing books. I don't do that very often. This one deserved it. This is Shade by Jerry Smith Reddy. And this is a very, uh, it's well loved. It's a book that one of my favorite book bloggers, uh, Ginger from G Reads, she loves this book. I am angry at it. Um, two reasons. The, the main one is that, okay, so this book was published, I think, in 2011. Let me see. I think it was 2011. Two thousand ten. So this was published in two thousand ten. And um in two thousand ten, two thousand eleven, two thousand twelve even, one of the most popular tripes in YA fiction. This is YA, um, urban fantasy, fantasy kind of a thing. Um one of the most prevalent tripes in YA fantasy at the time were these love triangles. I'm thinking Twilight. You know, the um, main character in Twilight, what's her name? Bella. Uh, has a thing for Edward and Jacob. It, it happens all the time in YA fiction, especially those books published during this time period. And that was the case with this. I don't like love triangles, but I hated it in this because it was romanticized cheating and I, I can't stand that like how can you be team one person or another when the the main character is like kind of cheating on her boyfriend I, I just it made me really kind of feel icky however the real reason that I disliked this book so much is the use of the R word I don't think that that word deserves um use in any context whatsoever. Um, I think that that is uh, quite possibly one of the worst words in the English language. Um, and I don't, I don't agree with its use. I don't agree with the way that it was used twice in this novel. Um, it was used as a synonym for stupid. And that is, like, I, I can't even with that word. Anytime somebody says that word, I'm like, don't say that word around me. Because I just, I can't. I can't with language like that. There's no need for that. I'm trying not to be on my soapbox. Um, so I'm a little disappointed in myself that I finished this book. Because the first time the word came up, I thought, why? I mean, just why? And the second time it came up, I should have thrown the book. Should have thrown it away. But because of my stinking back, and because I was being stubborn, I finished it. I'm disappointed. Um, I'm disappointed that this book is very well loved. I do not recommend it. If that word doesn't bother you, then have at it. Um, but I cannot... In good conscience recommend this book because it just phew, made me so mad so yeah um, I've arrived it extremely fast it's a very fast read um, because it is urban fantasy urban fantasy is always for whatever reason it's those stories that you just eat up um, but yeah piss me off and it's a series and another popular tribe were cliffhangers and like unnecessary cliffhangers I don't even know what to do with that book because I don't want to sell it because I don't want anybody else. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway. So after that, I started reading something that I am enjoying and something that is not bothering me and something that does not touch that nerve. Thank goodness. Etiquette and Espionage. Book the first of the Finishing School series. And it's it, it even says that. Book the first. Not book one. Not the first book in. Book the first. By Gail Carriker. 
This is so much fun. This is a fun book. It is classified as YA. However, the main character is 14. And that's kind of more middle grade to me. So this book is about this girl, Sophronia. And she's a hellion to her mother. It takes place, it's steampunk, so it's historical fiction blended with fantasy. Um, steampunk is generally speaking considered science fiction uh, because it's not necessarily a fantastical world, it's a world that is built based on science. So, um, but I get a little bit confused with that because science fiction is also like, it's possible. But because it's historical fiction, it's not possible. Like, it's not possible that this was the world in 1846. So, anyway. Um, so it's steampunk. Um, and it's about this girl, Sophronia. And she ends up being sent off to this finishing school. And her family thinks that she's going to the most prestigious etiquette finishing school. Known to man. It's, um only for girls and it's secretive and um, it will teach her how to be a lady because Sophronia likes to climb things and she likes to get into trouble and she's very snarky. The school, however, is not what it seems. They teach them both etiquette. Um, they continually talk about how terrible Sophronia's curtsy is, which I think is hilarious. and. Um, but they're also teaching them the ways of espionage. So poison making, um, using one's uh, feminine facilities to gather information such as fluttering your eyelashes or um, properly timed fainting or <laughs> um, what else is there? Um, but it's set in this world, so this is what makes it fantasy. It's set in this world where werewolves and vampires are legitimate. They actually exist. Um, it's, it's just a lot of fun. Some people have compared it to, it's like a steampunk Harry Potter. I would not go that far. I would not go that far. Just because it takes place in a school and there's some fantastical elements does not make it a Harry Potter boarding school. Um, one thing that I wish that it would do is I wish that the plot would come together. I find this in middle grade all the time where you're never really sure what the end goal is. I mean, Sophronia has these little mysteries and she has these little adventures, but it's not, it's not like an overarching theme. So I'm curious about how the rest of the book is going to go and how the rest of the series would go. Um, because I'm not sure what the, what the plan is. Not sure where, where this book is headed, but it's fun and it's hilarious. Gail Carriger is witty and she's sarcastic and I think that she makes fun of people um, in a light-hearted way though, not like a mean-spirited, but like light-hearted, like um, one of the characters, Mrs. Barnacle Goose. What even is that? Um, so yeah. Absolutely hilarious, very enjoyable read, um, definitely middle grade, so, yeah. One thing that I did want to ask you guys, this is my favorite font ever. Do you guys recognize it? I'll get up close. There's nothing in the book as far as what the font is. I don't think. No, the end pages don't talk about the font. I know that in Harry Potter they did, but this one doesn't. Jacket, author photo, jacket, printed in. Yeah, it's not, it's not talking about the, about the font. I love that font. It's the, it's such a weird thing to notice. It's the font that's used in the Daughter of Smoke and Bone series as well. If you have access to a print version of either of those books, um, and you happen to recognize that font, let me know, because I love that font for some reason. Anyway, I'm about halfway through. I'm intermittently reading this physical format 
as well as um, listening to the audiobook because some of the names uh, Dimity um, Presha uh, Professor Brainthrope is that Brainthrope? I can't remember now Beatrice Lefeu Lefeu Temenik there's just some interesting names um, and because it's UK um, it's a UK style story um, it's really excellent to um, to listen to the audio because you get the accent and the um, the narrator is Maura Quick who is excellent I don't know that I've listened to anything by her before but um, yeah she's really good as far as what I'm reading next I have no idea um, I have a couple of things on the docket, but I don't know what I'm actually going to read next. Because I'm stitching again, the reading is slowing down a little bit. Okay, two hours later. I think that's about probably how long this video is going to be. I have a really big editing task ahead of me, and I've got some cleaning up to do. And it's 12 o'clock, I haven't stitched yet today. So I am going to love you and leave you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for commenting. You guys are why I do this. Love Floss Tube. Love this community. Love you people. Every one of you. Even the mean ones. I love you too. All right. I will see you guys. I'm probably going to stick to my Wednesday, even though I'm only doing this these few projects. I'm still going to come back next Wednesday. Okay, see you later, guys. Bye-bye.